welcome to today's video. My name is Trisha and I am going to be upgrading my final Crested Gecko into a 2x2x2 Zen Habitats enclosure. It is PVC and it is 60 gallons so it is a very spacious enclosure for crested and gargoyle geckos. I upgraded both of my gargoyle geckos, my other two crusties, and now this is my final one and then everyone is pretty much in Zen Habitats at that point. So I am so excited to get this done because the enclosure I'm keeping bamboo in right now is a 30 gallon and it looks awful compared to the Zen Habitats that I've made recently. So I am so excited to give her way more space and just have a beautiful setup. If you guys are interested in any of the Zen Habitats enclosures, all of them are in stock right now. So highly recommend checking them out. My affiliate link is in my description. So anytime you shop using that specific link, I do make a small commission. So I really do appreciate that. And if you guys have any questions relating to Zen Habitats, I work there as well. So I can help you guys out with any questions that you may have. But without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and show you guys how I build this setup. I hope that you guys enjoy it. All right, guys. So we are about to get started building my final Zen Habitats enclosure because I'm pretty sure all of my animals are upgraded into Zens at that point except Mango and Lulu, which I'm pretty sure they are planning to create like a top basking area for turtles that's going to be a Zen. Not official, but it's an idea that they're thinking about and potentially might do in the future. So if they do that, I'm so going to end up doing that for Lulu because I do like this setup. I think it would look a million times better if it had like a nice Zen area on the top. And I think that it would just be easier for her to like climb on and everything. So yeah, very excited for that to happen if it does. Um, but until then, this is like my final upgrade that I'm going to be doing because until I move and can like expand my enclosures, this is going to be my last upgrade. So I hope that you guys enjoy this one. This is going to be for Bamboo. Her enclosure is currently over here. It looks like complete crap. There's poop all over the screen. Um, it's a, what is it? A 30 gallon enclosure, which gives her a lot of height, but it's like very skinny. So it doesn't have a lot of like horizontal space. And I hate how this looks. So I am so excited to upgrade. This is Bamboo, which is the last one I upgraded was Chip. Chip um, had a son, actually a daughter, which is Bamboo, the one gecko that I kept that I bred. So I'm very excited to get this one upgraded as well. I have supplies just kind of sitting around. We have the enclosure. So the first thing that I need to do is take the panels out and just start by doing the naturalistic backgrounds with Great Stuff Spray Foam. So that is what I'm going to show you guys first. So the very first thing that I've done is laid out my panels. So the back panel has a hole in it and that is for the, um, it's the wire grommet where if you wanna feed holes through, you can use that or you can use the solid plug. It should be in the small parts box. So here is the small parts box when you open it up. Um, it comes with this little sheet talking about not releasing animals into the wild and how that's problematic, which is awesome. I love that they added this. Um, then it comes with this and it refers you to the website for assembly. It shows you, they have videos and written instructions on the website. So very handy. Comes with this cute little sticker, kind of hard to see, but has two little beardies on it, like their logo. And then we have a ton of corner parts and some tape for the substrate shield. This is the door lock and handle. Um, and then these, this is the wire grommet. So this would be the one that you put in this plug if you want to feed whole, like cords through the hole. Um, I'm not using any cords or anything like that. And if you have a snake or an animal that could easily escape through this, don't recommend using it. Then you would use the solid plug, which is what I'm going to put in here. So I'm gonna have to like lift that up to push it in properly. So other than that, we have the two side panels and I don't have much cork bark. I tried to make do with what I had. This one is like a little bit of a cave situation that they can climb on top of. This is the feeding bowl, another cork bark. And this one has spray foam on it that just won't come off. 
from something else that I used. I think I, I pulled it out of the old one and then this one too. So I'm just going to start spray foaming everything with the Great Stuff spray foam. And you'll be noticing that I will leave like a solid inch around the perimeter because these need to tuck into the metal frames, which are over there to be assembled later, along with these awesome Squishmallows. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, now is the fun part. I get to spray foam and then let it sit for 24 hours to dry and then start carving tomorrow. spray foamed and pretty much in place. Now I just have to let everything dry for 24 hours and let it expand and then I can start carving away at it. I did leave quite a bit of space at the bottom of this one, but that's okay. There's gonna be like substrate and stuff at the bottom anyway. Um, so yeah, I only used three cans for this, surprisingly, for all three panels. So I will check back in tomorrow and get back to work. All right guys, so it is the next day and as you can see, everything is dry and hardened and expanded quite a bit. So now I'm just going to take a knife and carve off all of this excess foam and shape it the way that I want it to be. And then I can finally paint these. one is looking like after I carved it. Um, I wanted to make sure there was room for her to be able to climb up under this so she can use this not only to hide behind but then she can climb on it as well. So just different things like that and then there's just good texture, different areas for her to grip onto and climb around. It looks like more of a rock because before you carve it it just kind of looks like brains. Um, so now it's smoother and it's easier to paint. It just looks better this way. So that's why I like to carve it all down. That's all the excess that came off. So I get to just throw all of that in the garbage, finish carving the other two, and then finally paint. So I'm about to paint. I am using dry lock and cement dye because the dry lock comes gray like this. There's a little tab of paint in there. So I mix it all up right now. We have like this, um, brown looking color. So that is what I'm going to be using to paint all of this. all together this is what it's looking like um, it's pretty cool because these like attach and I didn't even mean for that to happen um, so now I'm just going to take all of these fake plants which I have quite a bit and I'm just gonna shove it into the spray foam and then most likely move this into the room before I put in the substrate which is this repti soil um, because that's gonna make this pretty heavy so first we're just gonna put the plants in So now it's in the reptile room, well, my bedroom, which is also functioning as a reptile room. So I put all of the plants in and now I have to put in the substrate. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put maybe like two to three inches. I don't know, we'll see. So now I just put in this philodendron along with the dirt. It is really cloudy today and there's not much light in here. So it's kind of hard to see everything. I'm like really filling this one in. Um, next, I'm going to take some of this Bio Dude live terrarium moss with this adorable picture of a frog and just place it around the setup for some pops of green on the substrate because it's really dark right now. It just looks black. So hopefully this will stand out a little bit more 
can't really hold this and film. This is why I'm bad at filming while I'm doing things. I like physically can't do it. And I have nowhere to set this up because I'm on a step ladder. So it's a little rough right now. So now you can kind of see it's sitting around there. It adds a really nice texture. Um, I really love this stuff and it comes in like big chunks, but if you want to break it up to be smaller pieces, you can also do that. I'm just keeping them as like a big little, big little, I'm keeping them as big pillows for my gecko to lay on or do whatever. It's just good for enrichment and I feel like it just makes the enclosure look better. Um, so next up, I'm just going to add some of my leaf litter. I have this smaller one and then I have another smaller one that's like a different color and that'll be the finishing touch for the substrate. So now we have bamboo. She is so chunky. Um, she is definitely a female. She might have some eggs that she's gonna lay soon because like, oh my lord, she's chunky. So now we're gonna put her in her setup. She's being really chill, which is pretty surprising because normally she's like all over the place. There we go. So this is her finished enclosure. She has a ton of hiding places in this, little nooks and crannies, plants literally everywhere. Um, so I think that she's gonna be very happy in here. She can hide under this one. Like there's, it's gonna be hard to find her, I'm sure. But that is her full setup. There's the leaf litter, some moss. I'm gonna add some isopods and springtails later on. I forgot to get them, which is why I didn't put them in in this video, but we will definitely have a bioactive setup here. Uh, but yeah, that's Bamboo and her setup. If you guys want a Zen Habitats, please check out my affiliate link in my description. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah.